Hello and welcome to another Raggy's Bears, Wines and Spirits review. Tonight I'm going to be reviewing St. Peter's G3, their gluten-free beer. I uh, picked this up last year at Morrison's Beer Festival, um, late on last year. Uh, there's about three or four different... Um, God, my floor's terrible. Uh, three or four different um, St. Peter's Bears there that day. Uh, citrus, their citrus beer was there, which was slightly underwhelming. A blackberry and raspberry beer, uh, this, and I think there was a, even an alcohol free offering. Um, I've actually got four alcohol free bottles up there still to, no, five, still got five to drink. I palmed two off to a workmate and uh, <laughs> he wasn't impressed. <laughs> uh, I think they're very much an acquired taste, you know, these alcohol free jobbies. And certainly that one, um, yeah, very much. Tastes like cold tea, if I'm being honest. But hey, uh, that's not to slag it off. Uh, the fact of the matter is that you have a lot more la hell over them. And, uh, you know, they're a very different animal to proper beer. So 4.2%. Never had this before. St. Peter's do make some nice beers, though. And what they do make which a lot of companies don't, is beer kits. And as a home brew fan, I've brewed their Ruby Red Ale, which is a lovely, lovely red ale. And their Honey Porter. Now, Honey Porter is one of the very best home brew beer kits that I've ever brewed. You know, one, top, top five beer kit, definitely. Along with the Cherry Beer Kit that I've done, um, Evil Dog. That's up there. I'll have to do a proper top five beer kits uh, one of these days. So, colour, uh, amber colour, depending on where you look at it. Carbonation and lace, and I don't keep doing that because it's making me dizzy. Uh, Whitehead. I'm getting a tea aroma. There's definitely malts in the aroma. Oh, definitely getting that maltiness, similar sort of maltiness that I got from the um, alcohol free version. Different. So it says a clean, crisp, gluten free ale with a Pilsner style lager finish and aromas of citrus and mandarin from American Amarillo hops. Sad to say, I didn't get any of that. Um, first review, 3.6 out of 5. As a G3 beer, this is one of my favourites. Others are way too carbonated. Another one, 3.6 again. Bronze with an unusual cardboard-like flavour that is typical of gluten-free beers. A reasonable attempt to produce a gluten-free beer, but I'm afraid it's not for me, despite him giving him a good uh, review score. <laughs> Another one, 2.3. And what the heck is this? Sweet beer, no grades, no hops, uninteresting. And, uh, you know, you have to rem be reminded of the fact that it's gluten-free. So, obviously, I don't understand. I'm not a gluten-free person myself, so I don't understand what makes it and what they have to do to make it a gluten-free beer. I know that Krabby's ginger beers are all gluten-free. But other than that, no idea. Oh, it has, um, it's got an acquired twang to it, I'll give you that. Oh. Oh. I'm glad I'm not a gluten-free drinker. Because if this is the stuff you have to drink, oh dear. Now obviously there's a reason behind it, so I'm not going to slag off, you know. Obviously people have got their, you know, what they can and can't drink. I bought a cheap floor from B&M last, not last year, year before now. Because I've had the beer room for a while. And this cheapo bloody um, laminate. And it is absolutely shizzle. 
I'm going to end up getting some loft boards. I've got insulation under, I've got the floor of the shed and then I've got triple layers, in fact probably quadruple layers of this loft insulation, uh, bubble wrap insulation and I've put this over. So the, the floor is fine, it's just the fact that this stuff's not very good at all. So I can see me having to rip it up and put loft boarding down and then probably line her over the top. Most annoying. A joiner, I am not. A gardener, so so. A beer drinker, hell yes. <laughs> mm. And a spiller, oh definitely. So another nice day today. Sun's out, a bit warmer than it said it was going to be. Temperatures have definitely dropped though, you know. In February we had 20 odd degrees. In um, March, you know, we had, what is it, March or April, we had 25 degrees, beautiful. We're coming into May and it's not looking good for the next week or two. You know, quite low temperatures, warm enough, but not exactly barnstorming, barbecue weather, you know. Try saying that five times. We'll come home tonight, did a load of weeding, cut daffodils down. I, I made my lawns bigger. Um, even as a gardener, I want to make life easy for me. And by doing that, I've got rid of shrubs. I've planted up my garden in a way that I know that I'm not going to be digging it up every season, as I have done for the last 10 years. Um, but I've also um, made lawns larger so that flower beds or shrubs or whatever, that I can kneel down and just pick out the weeds without having to get climb into the middle of a bed, you know, to get to it. All about, you know, obviously 47 now, so all about knowing what your age is and knowing that, you know, at some stage, make life easier. But not only that, making life easier. It's about enjoying the summer months. I don't want to be gardening all summer, especially when I do it for a living. You know, I want to be enjoying the outdoor weather. And hence why I built this uh, beer room, you know. So it was a gym and no one went in it. So still got some remnants, still got the bloody treadmill that no one goes on. The wife so I said to the wife, says, can we get rid of it? She says, no, no, got to keep it. And she's got this wobbling machine that uh, I've been on it, it's awful. Wobbles the hell out of you. It's supposed to wobble all the fat so it biodegrades down inside of you. You come off that for half, half an hour and you, you know, it's not good. Then I've got a little horsey machine here as well. I mean, for me, I can take them all, get rid of them all and uh, make it uh, more of an operation in here, you know. Uh, put proper barrels at the back and have pumps going so you can pour yourself a hand pump the beer. I don't know if I'd go that far, though. I'd probably use it for pumping a wine out of a, out of a, a wine pump because that, you know, the wine would be a little bit slower and maturing in the barrel. I mean, I've got a lovely strawberry wine just to the side here. Just there. And that's maturing in the barrel. And I tell you what, absolutely beautiful. Made from strawberry, um, made from apple juice and strawberry cordial, of all things. Bubbled away for about two and a half weeks. And uh, it's already nice. And uh, give it some time, you know, and I'm not in no rush to drink it. Um, it's going to be a nice uh, wine, especially in the summer months. And I've got an orange one as well, brewing away now. That's what you can hear in the background, bubbling. And in fact, I've got Sauvignon Blanc and Primitivo on the floor. So, set up for the summer months for wine, you know. Just hope it all turns out drinkable, you know. And uh, I'm sure I'll drink it, whether it does or not. Anyway, as for this fella. So, very different taste. This pills and the taste, it's 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 a, it's a different one for me. Um, it's not nasty tasting, as in the beer's got something wrong with it. It's just not in no way or shape my cup of tea. Ooh. Ooh. Yes, yes, it's, it's, it's a different beast. Um, I mean, surely, uh, I don't know, it's like 
breweries off, but surely there's a way of making these uh, gluten-free beers a bit more tasty. Um, I mean, Krabby's is gluten-free ginger beer. And that's absolutely delicious, you know. I'm an avid ginger beer fan, so that's going to be. But I'm also a real ale fan and a beer fan, and uh, this is not floating the boat. Oh. Oh, dear. Oh, we have light. The light has risen. If I appear brighter, it's because there's a little light come on. So to break it down, um, amber pore, there is carbonation and lace in there, not overly too much. There was a white head, aroma, a tea bags, I could take, I could smell tea, like malt tea, uh, taste. This is much the same, but and there's a, there's a, there's a taste to it, and I, I've got to be honest, it is not my. Uh, it just doesn't do anything for me. It's um, I need something different to go after this because it's uh, it's kind of killed my taste buds. Um, you know, there's always that bit. I mean, whether it's just my taste buds or the fact that it's a bit rancid, I don't know. You know. Um, Oh dear. Ooh. Oh dear, dear, dear. That was not good. Oh. Oh dear, oh dear. So. St. Peter's makes some great beers. If that's what gluten-free beers taste like, I'm never ever going to drink another gluten-free beer again. Because it just wasn't the greatest. Um, I might be posting this on their Facebook page because I think they'd probably ban me from ever going on. Um, yeah, not that nice at all. So out of five. Oh. 2.0 out of 5, my lowest scoring uh, beer review. I'm sorry, but that, that was just not nice at all. Um, have I got a bad bottle? I don't know. I mean, I would hope that's a bad bottle because I do feel sorry for anybody who has to drink gluten-free beers. If that's what they taste like, oh my giddy aunt, no thank you. Thanks for watching. See you soon. I must be my fat first.